good morning my dear friends today's subject is different kinds of general defenses it's coming under law of torts my name is k umeshro i am requesting you to subscribe to my channel and it gives motivation me to give more and more topics now to this subject is the general defenses <clears throat> different kinds of general defenses voluntary non fit injury and there are so many other types of general defenses okay? these are certain exceptions also there in the principle is not applicable what is the meaning of general defense general defenses in generally torts act or omission amount to wrongful act when the defendant causes harm or injury to the plaintiff the plaintiff has a right of remedy by way of compensation in law of torts <clears throat> under certain circumstances the plaintiff could not get success he could not get compensation even though he successfully proves injury the defendant put some certain grounds for the justification of torts caused to the plaintiff or to the property of the plaintiff these are called the general defenses of tortious liability under these grounds defendant is excused these are justified or excused in the public interest different kinds of general defenses voluntary non fit injury act of god inevitable accident necessity private defense statutory authority act of the state parental authority judicial and executive authority plaintiff himself wrongdoer mistake and act of causing slight harm voluntary non fit injury it means damage suffered by the consent is not a excuse for action sufferer invites probable danger for himself he gives consent for the danger which may or may not occur where the sufferer is willing to accept danger no injury is done for example people go to the motor car races motorcycle races and there are risks of injury second doctor tell the patient operation is necessary he gave consent thereafter he cannot claim compensation we invite somebody to house we cannot sue him for the trespass boxer cannot file a complaint as long as he is playing according to the rules of game there are certain exceptions in which the principle is not applicable they are rescue cases defendants act is misconduct and deliberate negligence based on implied agreement dangerous operation is going on and an action based on statutory duty defendant is under duty to prevent second exception is the act of the god what is the meaning of the act of the god act of the greater force it is irresistible forces it could not be seen it is beyond the human agency it cannot be recognized by man of reasonable care and foresight it could not be guarded against for example storms earthquake violence eruptions heavy rain falling of tree flash of lightning they are all called as act of god it is extraordinary occurrences which could not have been foreseen 
which could not have been avoided. It is without human intervention. Its effect is extraordinary. Its effect is spread to the entire public area. Courts have no discretionary power. Strict liability can also not be imposed in the case of torts arising out of act of God. Now we will take some case laws. Nicholas versus Marshland. The defendant constructed some artificial lakes on his own land. These artificial lakes are so strong that they were able to face the ordinary rains. In one year, extraordinary rains occurred and the defendants, defendants artificial lakes were filled with the full of water. Due to this artificial lake broke down, heavy water washed away the bridges of the plaintiff. The plaintiff sued the defendants for the recovery of damages. The defendant pleaded that the defense is the act of the God. The court gave judgment in favor of defendant. Third one is inevitable accident. Inevitable accident means it is unavoidable act which could not be avoided by ordinary care, caution and skill. Inevitable accident may occur by reason of natural forces or by intervention of human agency. For example, inevitable accident means traffic accident, train accident, building collapses, they are all the examples. So inevitable accident can be prevented or avoided by utmost care and caution. Cautious person can anticipate the inevitable accident. The effect is limited to one or few persons concerned to that effect. It is a branch of act of God. Strict liability can be imposed on tortious liability. Courts have discretionary power in determining the defendant's tortious liability in case of inevitable accident. We will take one case law. Nitroglycerin case. The defendant was a carrier. Some wooden boxes were interested him for transportation. These wooden boxes contained nitroglycerin substance. The consigner of the goods not intimated this factor to the defendant. One of the wooden boxes was damaged and began to leak. The defendant got the box into his office and opened it with an intention to repack it. Wooden boxes containing the above item exploded and damaged the plaintiff's building. House of Lords held that the defendant was not liable as he did not know the contents of the wooden box. It is inevitable accident. Another case, Brown vs. Kendall. Two dogs were fighting. These dogs belonging to plaintiff and the defendant. The defendant with a good intention tried to separate them. When he was trying to separate the dogs, plaintiff came near to the defendant and defendant did not observe the arrival of plaintiff. The defendant accidentally hit the plaintiff on his eye. House of Lords held that the act of the defendant was an inevitable accident and he was not held liable. Another case is Farden vs. Harcourt. The defendant parked his car in a street and left his dog inside the car. The dog was always quiet and docile. The plaintiff was walking past the car. The dog started barking and jumping inside the car and smashed the glass panel. And the small glass piece entered the plaintiff's left eye. The plaintiff sued the defendant for damages. The court held that accident was unavoidable incident and there was no negligence on the part of defendant. Fourth one is necessity. Necessity means welfare of the people is supreme. Necessity gives privilege as to private rights. Here wrongful acts were done by the defendant to save his life and property under 
and unavoidable circumstances. So welfare of the people is supreme. It is an implied consent is given by every member of society. Individuals' welfare is sacrificed for the public good. In this case, law does not give any remedy. For example, when the house is burning, one person came and removed the roof. His intention is to stop the fire, prevent the further spreading of fire. He might have caused certain damage to the house. His act is justifiable. Ship is being over luggage. There is a danger of ship going to sink due to the leakage of seawater. Captain orders to throw some of the luggage into the sea so that ship can be saved from the danger of sinking. His action is justifiable. In road accident, person injured, doctor sometimes has to conduct operation in emergency without informing the near relatives of patient to save the life of the patient. This is necessity. Another case, Olga Tennis versus Bombay Municipal Corporation. The Bombay Municipal Corporation took a campaign against the pavement dwellers. The pavement dwellers challenged their activity. The corporation pleaded that they were trespassers. Supreme Court gave the judgment in favor of the pavement dwellers. Supreme Court opined that due to the necessity they have been residing on pavement and it is the duty of the government to provide homes for all. Lee versus Gladstone. Defendant was an officer of a prison. The plaintiff was a prisoner and he started hunger strike. To save her life, the officer forcibly fed her. The plaintiff sued the defendant for battery. The court held that it was not a battery. It had become necessary to save her life and the defendant was not liable. Private defense. Every person has a right to defend, to protect his body, protect his property against unlawful harm. He may use defense to his wife, parent, child, master and servant. No action is maintainable while exercising private defense. But he has to use only reasonable force. Private defense is a good defense in criminal law and also in law of torts. It is recognized as good justification. It is the duty of the every person to protect himself. If another person comes and attacks him, he can successfully react with reasonable force required to self-defense. In doing so, if he causes death or injury to the wrongdoer, defendant shall not be held liable. However, force should not be used in excess of and force should be reasonable. Morris versus Nugget. A came from B's house. B's dog ran out of his house and bit A. B raised his gun and shot the dog as it was running. Now he cannot justify his act because dog was running. Here the use of private defense is not justifiable. Statutory authority, it means power is given by the legislature to do certain acts and if any tort is committed in the course of such act, the injured cannot recover any damages except compensation. For example, land acquired for railway line. Manchester Corporation versus Farm Work. House of Lords held that when the parliament was authorized to do certain thing to be made or done in certain place, that can be no action for nuisance. Nuisance is the inevitable result of the making or doing so authorized. Gas light. It was held that gas company has statutory power to place pipes under certain highways. Act of the state. Act done in exercise of the sovereign power in relation to another state or subjects 
of another state is called act of the state. The courts have no authority to question the act of the state. Parents having the parental or quasi parental rights. Parents have the right to punish the child to prevent him from doing mischief to others. Parents allow lawful control to administer punishment to child. It is presumed that parents have delegated their authority to the teacher when child is sent to school. But punishment should be moderate. If there is an excessive use of force, the defendant is liable for assault and battery. Person having judicial or executive, executive authority, protection is given to the judicial officers to act then in the discharge of judicial duty. No judge, magistrate, justice, collector or any person acting judicially can be sued in any court for any act done by him in the discharge of his judicial duty, whether in the limits of jurisdiction or not, but he must have acted in good faith. This is under Judicial Officers Protection Act 1850. This act does not give protection to the judicial officers from being sued in civil or criminal cases in their personal, private capacity or personal capacity. It protects the officer for acts in respect of act done by them in the discharge of judicial functions. If the judicial officers behave negligently and willfully and cause harm to another person, he shall be held responsible. Judicial officer should not utilize his power for the selfish ends. Next one is the plaintiff is a wrongdoer. Law says no man can take advantage of his own wrong. Means wrongdoer ought to not to be permitted to make a profit out of wrong. No man is allowed to take advantage of his wrong. No action arises from the immoral causes. A is the wife of B. She induces A to divorce B and I will give 50,000 rupees. I give. A does not give divorce to B. Now C cannot sue A for recovery of 50,000 because C himself is a wrongdoer. A thief enters into the house of B in a night and steals B's property. B hits thieves with a club. Thief cannot sue B for tort of assault committed by him. Mistake. Mistake is a fact and is the difference in the criminal law. Ignorance of fact can be excused. Ignorance of law cannot be excused. Under law of torts, neither mistake of facts nor mistake of law stands as a good defense generally, but exceptional cases it is the exceptions. Acts causing slight harm. Court does not consider slight harm as a wrong of which person of ordinary sense and temper could not complain. Thank you.